Hi everyone, Ross Satchel from Microchip back again. Welcome to episode 11 in our AVR bare metal series. In the previous video, we went over how I created a main clock control header and source file that can be reused in other projects. We also went over the ADC peripheral, but stopped short of writing an ADC initialization function. In this video, we will go over the registers that are needed for using the ADC and then write an initialization function that gives us access to almost all of the features of the ADC. So let's get started. We want to make our ADC initialization function as fully featured as possible, so we will include things like the voltage reference, run standby, conversion mode, that is single-ended or differential, whether we want the result left adjusted or not, the required resolution, that is 10 or 12-bit resolution, free running mode, a user-defined initialization delay, number of samples accumulated, ADC clock prescaler from the peripheral clock, sampling delay, channel select for both the positive and negative inputs, window comparison mode, and the upper and lower thresholds for the window comparison. I will call the init function ADC underscore init, which has a void return and we'll have all of those parameters. So let's go through them one at a time. I'll start with the voltage reference, which is in the VREF peripheral. So let's jump to the datasheet, section 21. And we can go straight to the register summary and click on ADC0 ref. There are two entries there we want. The first is reference select. The other is the always on bit. All of the other register settings are in the ADC register summary. So let's jump to that in the datasheet. First is the control A register. We have run standby, conversion mode, left adjust, and free run, which are all single bit settings. So we can use an unsigned 8 bit integer for each of them. We will use the enable bit in a different function. We also have the resolution select, which following all of the other multi bit register settings will have the data type of the peripheral, ADC, followed by an underscore then followed by the bit field name res cell and ends in underscore t. Next is the control B register, which just has a bit field for the number of samples accumulated. We can select from zero accumulated samples, this means taking a single reading, all the way up to 128 samples accumulated. Next is control C register, which just has the ADC clock prescaler, and the options range from dividing the peripheral clock by two all the way up to 256. Next is the control D register, which has the initialization delay and sample delay. Then there's control E register, which just has the window comparison mode bit field. Next is the sample control register, which controls sampling time as a function of the number of ADC clock cycles, with the default being two. Next is the mux pos, positive channel select bit field. Then we have the mux neg, negative channel select bit field. Then we have the command register, which has single bit settings for start conversion and stop conversion. Then we have EV control, which has a single bit for enabling the event input for starting an ADC conversion. We will not be using this setting in this video. Next is int control, which enables the use of interrupt requests for both the window comparison and the result-ready IRQs. We will not be using this setting in this video since we will be polling the interrupt flags instead. Next is the int flags register. These flags are set when the appropriate conditions are met. These can be polled in application code if the user is not requesting an interrupt. That's exactly what we will be doing. Then there's debug control, and a temp register. We will not be using either of those in these videos. Then there's the 16-bit result register, with both the high and low bytes being accessible, or the whole 16-bit register can be accessed at once. Then we have the window comparison low threshold register, which is also a 16-bit register, and it's accessible as either the whole register or the high or low byte. Then we have the window comparison high threshold register, which is another 16-bit register and is accessible as either the whole register or the high or low byte. 
Coming back to our ADC initialization driver, I will be including the voltage reference select. For the bit field settings, we will use the appropriate data types. So the data type for the ref cell macros starts with vref underscore ref cell, and we can find that in the header file. Just search for vref underscore ref cell, and we can see the macro options along with the data type at the bottom. I will just copy that data type and return to my main file and paste it as the first parameter. I will call the variable vref. Next is always on, which was a single bit, so we can use an unsigned 8-bit integer, and I'll call the variable vref underscore always on. Now we have the ADC run standby bit, which was a single bit, so again, I'll use an unsigned 8-bit integer, and I'll call the variable run standby. The conversion mode was a bit field, and the data type starts with ADC underscore conv mode, Let's just search the header file for that to be sure. There it is, adc underscore conv mode underscore t. So let's add that to our adc init function, and I'll call the variable conv mode. Left adjust was a single bit, so we can use an unsigned 8-bit integer, and I'll call the variable left adjust. Now resolution select was a bit field, so let's search the header for adc underscore res cell. There it is, adc underscore res cell underscore t. So let's add it to the init function, and I'll call the variable res cell. Free running mode was a single bit, so we can use an unsigned 8-bit integer, and I'll call the variable free run. Initialization delay was a bit field, so let's search the header for adc underscore init delay. There it is. ADC underscore init delay underscore T. So let's add that to our ADC init function, and I'll call the variable init delay. Sample delay was a bit field, so let's search the header for ADC underscore samp num. There it is, ADC underscore samp num underscore T. So let's add that to our ADC init function, and I'll call the variable samp num. ADC clock prescaler was also a bit field, so let's search the header for ADC underscore presk. There it is. So let's add that to our ADC init function, and I'll call the variable presk. ADC sample delay was a bit field, so let's search the header for ADC underscore samp delay. There it is. So let's add the data type to our ADC init function, and I'll call the variable samp delay. Sample length was an 8-bit register, so we can use an unsigned 8-bit integer, and I'll call the variable samplen. Positive multiplexer was a bit field, so let's search the header for adc underscore muxpos. There it is, so let's add it to our adc init function, and I'll call the variable muxpos. Negative multiplexer was a bit field, so let's search the header for adc underscore muxneg. There it is. So let's add that to our ADC init function, and I'll call the variable muxneg. Window comparison was a bit field, so let's search the header for ADC underscore wincm. And there it is, so let's add that data type to our ADC init function, and I'll call the variable wincm. Window low threshold was a 2-byte register, so I'll use a 16-bit unsigned integer and name it wlt. Window high threshold was a 2-byte register, so I'll use a 16-bit unsigned integer and name it WHT. Now let's copy this and create a function prototype and paste it in. We can remove the variable names and just leave the data types. Now in the init function, we need to take the variables and use them to set the relevant registers. I will start with the voltage reference. The register is vref adc0 ref, and we want to put in the vref parameter and bit shift it to the left to the beginning of the bit field. You'll notice in the data sheet that this bit field begins at bit 0, so the bit shift is redundant. However, as I mentioned earlier, it is good practice to include the bit shift for consistency as it helps prevent careless errors. 
we will use the makeover bit shifting to the group position, which ends in underscore GP. So it's very clear what we're doing. Then we want to bitwise all that with the VREF always on parameter, which is bit shifted to the left using the VREF underscore always on bit position macro. And we can control click on each of those to be sure that it goes to the correct bit position as shown in the data sheet. Next is the ADC0 control A register, which has the settings for run standby, conversion mode, left adjust, resolution select, and free running mode. We can do the same thing with the bit shifting macros for each of those. So I'll start with the run standby parameter, bit shifted to the left using the ADC underscore run standby bit position macro. That is bitwise awed with the conv mode parameter, bit shifted to the left using the ADC underscore conv mode bit position macro. That is bitwise awed with the left adjust parameter, bit shifted to the left using the ADC underscore left adjust bit position macro. And that is bitwise awed with the res cell parameter, bit shifted to the left using the ADC res cell group position macro. That is bitwise awed with the free run parameter, bit shifted to the left using the ADC free run bit position macro. Next is the ADC0 control B register using the ADC sampnum group position macro. Again, this bit field starts at bit position zero, but for consistency and to prevent careless errors, we should use the bit shifting macro. Next is the ADC0 control C register, which just has the setting for the presk parameter. We bit shift that to the left using the ADC underscore presk group position macro. Next is the ADC0 control D register, which has the settings for the SAMP delay and a NIT delay parameters. Starting with the SAMP delay parameter, we bit shift that to the left using the ADC underscore SAMP delay group position macro, and we bitwise OR that with the init delay parameter, which is bit shifted to the left using the ADC init delay group position macro. Next is the ADC0 SAMP control register, which just has the setting for the SAMP LEN parameter, which is bit shifted to the left using the ADC SAMP LEN group position macro. Next we have the positive and negative multiplexer registers. Depending on whether the conversion mode is single-ended or differential, will determine whether or not we use the negative multiplexer. So I'll put in an if statement that checks the conv mode parameter is equal to the macro ADC underscore conv mode underscore diff underscore GC or group configuration. If that's true, then we will set the ADC0 muxneg register with the muxneg parameter bit shifted to the left using the ADC underscore muxneg group position macro. We will always need a positive multiplexer channel, so we will write to the ADC0 muxpos register with the muxpos parameter bit shifted to the left using the ADC muxpos group position macro. Next is the window comparison parameter WinCM. We need to check if it's being used, so I will use an if statement where I check if the WinCM parameter is not equal to the macro ADC underscore WinCM underscore none group configuration, meaning that we are using the window comparator. Then inside the body of the if statement, we will set the ADC0 WinLT register to the WinLT parameter, and then set the ADC0 WinHT register to the WinHT parameter. And finally, Set up the ADC0 control E register to the WinCM parameter bitwise shifted to the left using the ADC WinCM group position macro. So that's the initialization done. We also need some other functions to control things like enabling and disabling the ADC peripheral, starting a single ADC conversion, starting an oversampled conversion, 
checking if a conversion is done, checking if the window comparison setting has been satisfied, getting the ADC result, and getting the oversampler result and performing decimation. We will cover all of those as well as the application code in the next episode.